Money Meets. Time to meet the influential and outstanding figures on Money Meets. Money Meets. It is 93.7 FM Money, your business radio. And thank you so much for joining us on Money Meets. I have my guest in studio already. Very, very interesting guest too. It is none other than the CEO of Diamond TV, Mr. Costa Mwansa. Mr. Costa Mwansa, of course, is a renowned TV broadcaster who is well known for hosting hard talk shows such as The Assignment on Movie TV. You are a very, very interesting uh, figure, Mr. Mwansa. If you were asked to describe yourself in one word, what would that word be? Let's, 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 let's just start from there. Versatile. Versatile. Yeah. Could you kindly elaborate a little bit more? Well, obviously, a person who's versatile is, is fluid in so many aspects and, and, and being able to adapt uh, into different environments. So I describe myself as that uh, on the basis of things that uh, I have done and uh, intend to do in the future. All right. Could you uh, share with us your family background? We're just trying to get to know you, uh, where, where, where you came from, um, how it was, how, how life was for you growing up and uh, the like. Well, humble beginning. Um, <clears throat> boy born uh, on the Copper Belt in the town of Karalushi, went to school uh, in, uh, in the same town. Um, Christian upbringing. Uh, my dad was, was a minor there uh, in Karalushi. He passed on when I was eight years old. I was so, brought up by... So you're a copal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a copal, yeah, if, if, if you want to say it like that. Uh, brought out by a single mom. My mom uh, was in education until she retired uh, at 60. Uh, she was a headmistress. Uh, I went to secondary school at Mukuba Boys Secondary School in Chachacha in Kitwe. Uh, mm-hmm. From there, uh, I came to study my journalism at uh, Evelyn Horn College. From there, obviously, that is where I did media, and uh, that's where everything started. Why journalism? Well, I believe that you need to, to it's, it's not everybody uh, in today's world that uh, finds a job based on passion. Uh, sometimes you're forced into a job based on what your parents would want you to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get into a job on the basis of the economic conditions because you need to earn a living. Why journalism for me? I am one person who believes so much that for development to take place, uh, ideas need to be at the center of development and people need to speak out. So I'm a strong believer in aspects of um, not only the Zambian constitution, but in many world democracies, be it even in the USA when they talk about the Fifth and Sixth Amendment, aspects of freedom of expression, uh, freedom of the press. Um, I love uh, to, to, to write, not that I write books, but I love to express my ideas uh, okay. and opinions to influence others. And I believe that um, media, uh, being the fourth estate and journalism, has a lot to do with uh, uplifting the lives uh, of, of humanity, bringing accountability and checks and balances. It's, so, it's, it's something that I'm quite passionate about. Speaking for the voiceless too. Now, how did your upbringing, of course, uh, you said you were raised by a single mother. Um, how did your upbringing, uh, upbringing impact the Costa Mansa we, we see before us today? Uh, do, you th- do, you, do you think that had things been differently, maybe we might have had a different Costa Mansa? Is there any, any, anything from your, from, from your upbringing that you, you really point at and say, yes, this is what made me who I am today? Well, from a human eye, we may want to... We, we, we may want to look at it in that manner in, in the context in which you ask the question but as a Christian I'm a strong believer in God's grace and uh, I'm a strong believer that um, our lives are always predestined uh, by one Jehovah it only depends on whether you, you, you shy away from, from his grace or his presence and so on and so forth so um, if, if what I'm doing is purposeful uh, in the world according to God's wish and his desire then I believe that's the way it was, it was planned but maybe just to, to, to answer it from a human perspective, do I think uh, it would have been different maybe if my dad were around or if I was born in a different environment other mm-hmm. than the copper belt? Um, maybe, but I, I think nothing happens by accident. Some people say things happen by design. Some of these traits, you begin to nurture them uh, from, from, from a young age and begin to refine them. So even the love for, 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 for media, uh, love for music and a lot of creative content because art is very diverse. True. Um, and obviously the fact that um, 
th there was no father figure. Other people would always give an excuse to say because there's no father figure, mm -hmm. you you end up as as a young boy, obviously not you know not not making something out of your life. But the fact that my mother really provided for for all of us within the challenging times as a married teacher and so on gave me the aspiration to want to do something to give back, to want to do something uh, to make her proud, but also to want to do something uh, to be a man uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of my own, um, not to live, not that we suffered, but, but basically is to create something out of uh, myself, okay. regardless of, of, of that upbringing. All right. In case you were just joining us, we are speaking with Costa Mwansa. He's the CEO of Diamond TV. And of course, you might know him from uh, hard talk shows that he's hosted in the past, such as uh, The Assignment on Movie TV. We take a short break, a breather of sorts. We'll be back uh, to find out a little bit more about Mr. Mwansa. Stay tuned to Money FM. Money Meets. Time to meet the influential and outstanding figures on Money Meets. Money Meets. For business on the go, visit www.moneyfmzambia.com to watch, stream and download various programs from anywhere in the world. Money Meets. Time to meet the influential and outstanding figures on Money Meets. Money Meets. Welcome back. Money Meets Costa Mwansa, the CEO of Diamond TV. Um, welcome back to the show, sir. Well... Welcome back to the listeners and uh, thanks again for having me. All right. Um, you, like I mentioned, you're the CEO of uh, Diamond TV. You have obviously worked for other media fraternities. How was the transition phase from, you know, working for somebody and forming your own company? Well, not easy because, um, I mean, they say sometimes not everybody is born from business and obviously to take the courage uh, and the change of mindset that uh, you always have to report to somebody because the back never stops at you there's always somebody who you you can elevate your pressures to and so on uh, I must say the transition was not easy it, it, and uh, the transition uh, is still going on we we are barely just uh, close to two years in existence only uh, scratching the surface only scratching the surface but it, it, it takes um, mindset uh, for you to believe and, and and decide that really that's what you want to do Okay. Um, who is your inspiration, your, your role model uh, in the media fraternity? Have you ever had one um, locally, internationally? Well, like I said earlier on, in, in, in terms of what I do, um, it could be mentors or, or, or role models based on on, on, on Actually, the, on, that's the question I should have asked. On, 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 on the things that they do, uh, when I look at the aspect of me being a presenter and probably when I look at, at, at TV and say, oh, I want to be like that guy, um, I enjoy uh, watching a lot of, uh, I did watch a lot of Larry King, mm -hmm. um, the likes of Christian Amanpour, uh, both on the field as a journalist, uh, in studio with her own, you know, talk show, uh, the likes of Richard Kest, um, the likes of Oprah herself. So, I, I think I've been watching, and I do continue uh, to watch a number of people. They led Komala Dumo as well. Um, these are outstanding journalists uh, and, and broadcasters locally here. I never had a chance to meet uh, the late Charles Mando, but uh, a number of people, obviously, in some sense, will liken the aspect of a hard, tough, questioning uh, individual character of Charles Mando to myself. So mm -hmm. um, I've watched a couple of his interviews, and I think he was he was quite really bold. Um, the likes of um, Uncle Frank, uh, he's quite charismatic, um, you know, in, in, in terms of how... Uh, he does his his stuff so uh yeah fr from from the fraternity people like that uh from the business perspective itself uh i really am motivated and inspired by people who push themselves believe in the zambian dream mm -hmm. believe in the power of ideas um my my, my former boss who still remains um a, a good mentor of mine up to now mr steve nirenda is one person who uh has has uh, propelled me and taught me uh literally um most of the things that I know because he has a belief in that it, it is always about the brain muscle uh, that, that, that drives somebody to make the money and not the financial muscle that takes into, into, into uh, you the, the idea. So in, in essence, it's the idea first, then develop every business to make money from your idea. Uh, I read quite widely. Um, I, I do love a lot of um, uh, 
j- just to pick on business books I, I read a lot of you know Forbes Africa Forbes Global I read books on on, on, on Steve Jobs Bill Gates okay. uh, Africa's richest men and just just a variety of people just to widen my scope in terms of uh, learning something new every day this is a business radio of course and um, of course we like to have people that are business minded like yourself what would what would your advice be to somebody aspiring to be a CEO one day or you know trying to start up a business I think it feels it, it, it feels really good to be called all these titles GM MD CEO <laughs> chairman director and so on <laughs> and so forth but I think you need to you, you need to earn those titles uh, and and you're saying um, what would be the advice in terms of anybody who wants to be uh, a CEO? Uh, I think I'll tackle it in two different ways. There's one, obviously, where you will, you will need um, certain academic qualifications. In, in, in many corporates, including the businesses that I run, obviously, policy dictates that a person will need to hold such a position with a, sort of, with a certain sense of qualification. Sure. So sometimes um, you may start from just the bottom position in the organization and work yourself through uh, using experience, using obviously discipline, um, as well as uh, the dedication and the passion that I spoke about, um, and obviously advancing yourself in gaining knowledge. So when I talk academics, sometimes it's not always just about getting a PhD or a master's, because I believe for me, education, the best value of how somebody sees that they are learned or have utilized their education is being able to transform what you learn into uh, practice um, and, and, and then on the other side um, being a business uh, you know, channel I think there's been so much talk in present day Zambia of entrepreneurship and everybody wanting to start a, a business whether small, medium or large uh, whether you've inherited capital whether you've borrowed capital uh, or just the fact that you're ambitious but you've never been to school um, you, you can be running your own poultry farm you can call yourself a farm manager you, you can start your own Kantemba and call yourself your CEO of, true, of, true. Of, of, of a Kantemba but I think what is important is the ability to first of all have an idea Mm-hmm. And that idea in terms of whether you're going to supply goods and services, whether that is in demand to satisfy the people or your customers and the uniqueness in terms of what, what you're also giving. So the titles could be there, but really do you understand what it is that you're giving or offering and whether you can sustain and manage it? All right. Um you described yourself as a strong character earlier, um, as you were talking about the likes of uh, Mando. Um, and quite frankly, that's one thing I like about you, though. One thing I like uh, about you, watching you, you're always so calm, you know. <laughs> Even when it's very, very clear that the, the situation is tense, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, you're always so calm, always so firm. Um, how, 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 what's your secret? How do you handle um, these tough, tough uh, roles? Well, I can only be humble, Terence. Um, I think it comes with time and, and obviously, like I said, you, you, you sometimes need to watch people, understand and then define who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the type of person really who doesn't like taking no for an answer. Okay. And uh, when I say no, uh, it's, 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 you know, when you sit as, like in your case now, your job is to really get the best out of me in the mm-hmm. questions you ask for the sake of what the viewers might be thinking out there. So what my, my secret is when I'm sitting in there, I put myself in the shoes of a viewer or a listener. What question would a viewer ask or what is the answer that a viewer is looking You're for, looking on, for such, yeah. on, on, on such a matter? And really, uh, we, we bring these sources for accountability's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is why I don't believe that when a president or regardless of somebody's stature walks into the studio or be it on TV that they owe me or they owe the viewer a favor for being there being that there. No, they, they are so busy I think that is their role and, and, and one of my favorite taglines in media is the fact that we ask the questions that they do not like to answer because that's our that, job that's very true so uh, the secret again is also you ask a question some people will dodge but the ability to be able to ask follow-up questions or to ask the same question in a different way and format um, and, and literally being attentive because sometimes you may lose yourself uh, in an interview if, if, if you're not following up or sometimes the guest will ask will begin to ask you questions mm-hmm. you know sometimes they're strong characters that like may that. just take over the interview so yeah, you really need to take charge be attentive and have control uh, it's 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 this is your office mm-hmm. it's your office if I may ask 
do you have um, a particular person that you interviewed that was um, your most difficult interview or do you have an interview that you consider your most memorable well uh, um, like you know in the media every day is a fresh new one it's got different experiences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it brings different uh, excitements and so on and so uh, each one of them has just got uh, you know different dynamics to them but truth be told some become boring others are more exciting <laughs> um, Michael Sutter can go top of my list as well. I was well. actually going to say um, that. <laughs> the few times we engaged because of his nature, his, 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 he, he was quite an interesting character. Um, Gaddafi, uh, okay. I, I did have a chance to, 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 to not necessarily conduct a full interview with Gaddafi, but I attended, I was covering the AU summit uh, in Addis and um, I asked him about three, four questions. And quite interestingly, because I was asking in English, and mm -hmm. I would tell him, uh, Mr. Mr. President, for the sake of my English viewers at home, could you answer this question in English? But he was able to, to, to listen. But the fact that Gaddafi really believed that um, we needed to take pride in whether you're Arabic, you're Swahili or whatever, mm -hmm. he would answer me back in Arabic, but he didn't need anybody to um, translate, translate English because, because he understood. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Gaddafi as well, Sata, um, I know that um, one of the biggest interviews of late, you, you, you refer to the assignment so much because I, I did that program for over four years. For a long time. I've, yeah. I've, I've started my own personalized show. It's called Costa. Yeah, oh yes. Uh, on Diamond TV. Uh, one of the interviews that has gone viral is an interview uh, of me with uh, former Minister of Information, now Minister of Livestock, Mulenga Kampambenda. Uh, yeah, we had a, a good time. I remember that interview. <laughs> and, and, and this is why I keep saying you're always so calm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not to lose the focus. Uh -huh. Eyes on the ball and where you want to go. But, but the interviews, <clears throat> yeah, uh, memorable ones, th they are so many. Imagine um, I've been moderating almost now for the last nine, ten years. So presidential debates as well, among them quite interesting. The last one with the mayors I did was... was, was uh, uh, nice. I mean, I was being attacked by, by by some candidates, so they all have their different dynamics. They all have their different dynamics. Very, very interesting. We are speaking to Mr. Costa Monza, who is the CEO of Diamond TV, and of course, a renowned TV broadcaster. As you've heard, he has his own show on Diamond TV called Costa. We take another break on Money Meets. Continues after this. Money Meets. Time to meet the influential and outstanding figures on Money Meets. Money Meets. For business on the go, visit www.moneyfmzambia.com to watch, stream, and download various programs from anywhere in the world. It is 93.7 Money FM and welcome back to Money Meets. Money Meets Costa Mwansa, who is a television host of um, a show Costa on Diamond TV, a TV station he happens to be CEO of. Uh, now, let's try to get to know Costa personally. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about your family now? Well, yes, I'm a married uh, uh, gentleman. I've been married the last 10 years. I've got kids, uh, boys. And um, basically for me, um, like the Bible says, who finds a wife, finds a good, good thing. thing. Uh, they, they keep us going and, and uh, obviously they're the biggest advisors more than anyone you have in terms of influence and so on and so forth. Um, my, my principles are grounded obviously on Christian values. I, I, I do go to church. I'm a strong believer in the fact that uh, everything happens through the grace of God, like I said. Um, other than that, apart from basically, you know, family, um, I socialize with, with, with friends. Uh, I'm not so much of um, a soccer fanatic, sports-wise, so I'm, I'm, I'm not that big Man U, Chelsea type, but, but I love watching a good game of, of, okay. of football. Uh, disappointingly, we local, inclu local included? Yes, yes, I'm a, uh, I, I might not say I'm an Incana supporter, but time and time again, I love uh, watching and, and okay. for the sake of knowing what's going on around I, I, I follow a few teams in Kana uh, Mighty who've now gone into uh, into into the premiership they're coming to the premiership sadly we lost on Sunday um, I, I, I do follow football but I'm, I love watching my series I okay. love watching lots of series uh, I'm a suits guy um, uh, how to get away with murder guy so um, relaxing with friends TV 
uh, and so on. But obviously, the larger chunk of it, we're always pushing in, in finding always how to make the money. So work and finding how to put uh, bread and butter on the was, table, how to actually, make the money. I was actually coming to that. How, uh, how, how do you juggle um, your professional work mm. and, of course, uh, time with family and friends? Well, one thing you need to learn is when, when, when you, you are an entrepreneur, uh, or some would want to say a business owner, there's no eight to seven, there's, there's no eight to five shift. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, because wherever you are, uh, whether it's in bed at one o'clock uh, or it's three o'clock when you wake up, ideas keep on spinning you, challenges keep on spinning you. I mean, you need to look at issues of taxes, you need to look at issues of bills, you need to look at how to pay the people. And, and you're always thinking of creative and innovative ways of, of, of how to make your business stand out. Because, I mean, we're living in a digital world, it's highly competitive. You're not only competing uh, like in our industry, you're not only competing uh, for the same viewer or the same consumer uh, who is basically in Zambia, you've got influencers of Netflix, uh, Amazon, Facebook that is global. So mm -hmm. the sphere is, is really uh, shrinking with globalization and only the creative, the innovative and the pushers will survive. So there's never a time when, when you stop thinking. Everywhere you look around, you're thinking content. Everywhere you look around, you're thinking, uh, how can we do this better, cost effectively, but how can we stand out and get a big chunk of the pie? All right. Uh, speaking of which competition and whatnot, um, what's your vision for um, Diamond TV and also for yourself, let's say, the next 10 years? Well, um, our tagline is television reinvented. What we want, uh, what that means in terms of television reinvented, we, we, we are now at a stage where there's digitization, there's di uh, uh, we are in a space of digital edge and digital media, which means that um, the, the, the consumption trends of information by, by the consumer out there has changed because you've got lots of people now uh, where media is converging not only on the box as TV, but media is converging on, on, on radio, it's converging on tablets, it's converging on, on necessarily on the phone. So we need to reinvent, like right now, I mean, this show is being listened to on radio, but also being streamed live, uh, streamed live on Facebook. So people sure. no longer have that ability to wait in the evening to want to watch your news or wanting to watch that favorite soap because they can catch up, they can, uh, you know, watch it at their own time, whether on YouTube and so on and so forth. So for us, our vision is that we can, we can reinvent by putting that content that is on TV onto different platforms and formats, okay. uh, not only for the community in Zambia, but even to the outside world, not only Zambians in the diaspora, but how does our content as Diamond TV be relevant to somebody sitting in China as a Chinese person, to somebody sitting uh, in Slovakia? So we understand that for you to survive in the 21st century, you need to be tech savvy. You need to invest in, 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 in technology, not only in the actual hardware or software, but it in, in its use and how you apply it to maximize and optimize your revenue. So in terms of where we see ourselves five, ten years from now is obviously to be a station of relevance in terms of our content and our uniqueness, especially for the young people, uh, to promote uh, pop culture, uh, entrepreneurship and intellectualism in Zambia and taking it across. So we want to see ourselves as a station that will, will, will have its presence across you know, sub saharan Africa and by far and large on the international platform. So having relevance in terms of the information and the content that we give out. All right. I have one final question for you before yeah. we let you go. What's your favorite meal? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite meal uh it, on on any day i would go for an oxtail okay yeah right thank you very much mr costa Mons. i really appreciate you taking time off your business schedule obviously to come down and join us on money meets we are very very grateful thank you so much for having me and uh, uh i'd like to congratulate you guys for going on air uh and obviously the proprietors of this station uh who i know uh, and I know the hard work that they are putting into. Uh, I can only say to you guys, the sky is never the limit. Look beyond the silver lines and uh, great stuff that you're doing. Thanks for having us and all the best as well in your endeavors. Thank you very much. All the best to you as well, Mr. Mwansa. We have been speaking with Diamond TV CEO Costa Mwansa. He is a renowned TV uh, presenter. Uh, he has his show called Costa on Diamond TV and he has been talking to us here on Money Meets. It is 93.7 FM, Money, your business radio. Money Meets. Time to meet the influential and outstanding figures on Money Meets. Money Meets.